For those of you who have been following my channel, you know I'm a Gunlancer main. I play the chonkiest class in Lost Ark. But we are about to have a new chonker enter the arena, the Destroyer. If you like playing Gunlancer, there's a pretty good chance you'll also like the Destroyer. So I wanted to take a moment to talk about a few things you can start doing today in order to prepare for the Destroyer's release. But before getting into preparation, I wanted to talk about who this class is for. If you're the type of person who likes to see absolutely massive numbers, then this class is for you. Now I'm not talking about the highest DPS, but just seeing the raw numbers itself can provide an adrenaline rush on its own. If that's the type of player you are, then you'll like this class. But in addition to big numbers, the Destroyer deals some of the highest amount of stagger in the game. Previously, the king of this title was Gunlancer, but they will move down to second place. So if you like that playstyle of simplifying stagger checks on bosses, this is a class for you. And lastly, if you just like the theme of controlling gravity to throw around rocks and wield a massive warhammer, you're going to have a great time, I promise you. Moving on quickly to the class synergies the Destroyer brings, uh, they have two of them specifically. The first is a new change, and that's the addition of a taunt ability. One of their skills called Endure Pain had a tripod reworked, which added a taunt effect, so the Destroyer is now the second class in Lost Ark beside the Gunlancer that has a taunt ability. Endure Pain getting this taunt ability is really cool because it's essentially a defensive cooldown. While Endure Pain is active, you have a damage reduction and also immunity to any kind of crowd control, so the boss is forced to attack you but hits like a wet noodle. The second synergy provided by Destroyers is Armor Reduction. Several of their skills reduce enemy armor by 12%, which is always a welcome buff in any party. As for the playstyle of the Destroyer, you have two resources that you'll have to manage. The first is one called Gravity Cores. These are generated by using your blue skills and caps out at three cores. To consume the cores, you use your purple skills, also known as release skills. Consuming these cores will generate some meter depending on the amount of cores used, and once the meter is filled, your class identity can be activated to release a gravity field around you, reducing move and attack speed to enemies while you also cause your normal attacks to swing faster while also dealing more damage. The class identity gets altered by your engraving slightly. The Hammer of Rage engraving removes the gravity field component, meaning you generate gravity cores, but you can no longer activate the gravity field. The trade-off for this is that every gravity core consumed, you will have an increased crit chance and crit damage. So basically this just means that your release skills will deal massive amounts of damage. The other class engraving is called Gravity Training, and this causes you to passively generate some, uh, some gravity meter over time, and once the gravity field is activated, your basic attacks will have a higher crit chance and just deal more damage. So basically the difference between the two play styles is one focuses on raw big hits, uh, this is known as the Hammer of Rage build, and the other build focuses on more rapid, medium-sized hits with gravity training. Alright, so if you've made it this far into the video, you might be a little interested in the Destroyer, which comes out soon. Um, so how are we actually preparing for this class? Well, first off, you can actually make your Destroyer today. You can't literally make your Destroyer, but you can at least create the base level 1 warrior with the facial customizations and name you want. Basically just reserving the slot for your Destroyer. Moving on to something that might be a little bit more important, let's talk about the engravings that you can start accumulating today. So first up, we have the class engravings, and you can get these from the event that's going on today. Uh, if you buy the chests now, they will actually retroactively update once the Destroyer is released to include those engravings in there. You can also go to something like Anguish Isle, which will give you some books if you haven't already received them um, on any of your characters. Uh, there's also some of your knowledge transferred characters, which you can go back and do some older quests to get a few few engraving books from there. As for some of the other engravings that the Destroyer wants to use, the top priority is probably supercharged. The main damage sources of Destroyers are all charge attacks, making supercharge one of the most valuable engravings to utilize. Next up we have Master Brawler. Obviously, with a big hammer you're going to be bonking heads a lot, so most of the Destroyer skills have head attack modifiers, making Master Brawler a solid option to use. As always, any kind of DPS will most likely utilize any form of Grudge or Cursed Doll. Basically every DPS wants to use these, so you know, you might already have them. But Barricade is one that is actually often used because Endure Pain has a tripod which grants the Destroyer a shield on top of the damage reduction. The only issue with the shield component is, or the shield tripod, is that it competes with the taunt effect. So if you're doing Guardian Raids, you might want to use the taunt to 
you know, actually taunt the boss. But in Legion raids, you can't taunt bosses, so you might most likely use your shield in that case, allowing you to utilize Barricade. As for a final engraving, Keen Blunt Weapon is an option, but only specifically if you're playing the Hammer of Rage build. That build will focus on gathering crit as a primary stat, and they receive extra crit chance from their engraving already, making this a pretty decent engraving, but it should be the lowest priority of the previously mentioned engravings. In a similar fashion as engravings, you can start preparing your destroyer by accumulating gems. In case you didn't know, you can take gems from any other class, and when you fuse them, uh, they become a gem relevant to the class you fuse them on. So if for your destroyer, you can start getting many level 5 gems immediately if you just start using gems from, and you know, in, in my case, maybe I want to use my Gunlancer's gems. I can just send them over to my destroyer, fuse them, and now instead of a Gunlancer gem, I have destroyer gems. So it'll be a big power spike very early on. These gems aren't really necessary or mandatory, but if you're intending to main swap or just have this be like a main alt, gems are very powerful. Finally, this is probably something that's very obvious, but you want to start accumulating mats. With any new class release, you're going to have to go through some of the older forms of content before you reach tier 3. And recently, we've had the Express Character Pass and the Fate and Power Pass. But if you've used all those events and power passes on other characters, you'll just have to rely on knowledge transfers. So depending if you're going to be using your Express Pass or a Fate and Power Pass or just Knowledge Transfer, you can start running Chaos Dungeons on the characters where you expect your Destroyer to be made. Just as an extension of the Chaos Dungeons, you can run Infinite Chaos to get the tokens that you trade in to the vendor. Those tokens are actually roster bound, so you can just start saving them up now save them into your roster storage, and then when your de your destroyer is made, just grab them all out and buy up all the mats on those vendors. Another source you might not be utilizing at the moment is the guild exchange vendor. Uh, these are your bloodstone exchanges, and you can buy lower tier upgrade materials on all of your characters and just send them into your roster. These will only be the destruction and guardian stones, so just something to consider. You can't buy leap stones and have those traded. And as an extension of that, you can use the pirate coin vendors. Um, these are your traveling merchants outside of any of the major ports. One of the biggest gates early on in the honing process are going to be shards. So one way you can acquire shard bags is by running maps. If you have a large sum of rift shards saved up, consider exchanging a few of them for tier 1 or tier 2 maps to accumulate some of those early game shard bags to just help speed up that gearing process early on. Finally, there are a few islands you can do now to get some mats, such as Anguish Isle. While most of the items on the vendor here are roster bound, you can purchase 50 leap zones both in tier 2 and tier 3 on each of your characters that can run Anguish Isle, meaning you can quickly stock up on your leap stones doing this. Oh, and one more option that might be worth now is to accumulate a few blue crystals in advance. It's hard to predict what the market is going to do, but I'm guessing that once Voltan comes out, a lot of people are going to want to push, meaning that the honing costs for tier 3 honing mats are going to increase, and a lot of people are going to be using Mary Shop to really try to really push their item level up as much as possible. This should only really be a last resort option, especially if you're running low on gold. That's going to wrap up a few of the things that you can start doing today to prepare for the Destroyer's release. Hopefully you found this video helpful, and if you want more Destroyer and Gunlancer content in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel for more. I plan on making the Destroyer my main ult, and I'm excited to bonk some heads. But this was Goober Troy saying thanks for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.